Hey YouTube, today I'm going to fix my janky GPU install in my server and we're going to modify the PCIe 8x slot to accept a 16x GPU. Alright, we're just going to dig it out. So we've got my KVM monitor there. This is my uh, PFSense router. Um, I'm going to try to do this without shutting down my internet connection, so I'm just going to tilt this up. Don't worry, it's got an SSD in it, so any sort of shock I might introduce in a second hopefully won't affect it. And that should give us enough room to pop the lid on this bad boy and uh, take out my hodgepodge of an install. So I just popped the lid off, and you'll see back there that none of this is really mounted to anything and it's all loose. So right now I just uh, initiated the unraid shutdown command so everything should be shutting down as we speak. And oh, there we go, she just powered down. So now I can safely show how jank this actually is. So all of this, we've got a fan uh, zap strapped here. This is all loose and not mounted. Um, so let's uh, pull this stuff out and prepare to do the modification. So we're just going to pop this guy out like so. There's the GPU. Just going to pop out the riser or ribbon, I should say. We're going to pop out the RAID card and stick that out of the way. And we're going to undo this uh, stupid, when I said zap strap, I actually meant twist tie because I'm apparently too cool to use zap straps. And we're gonna pull this sucker right out. This is what it looks like currently. I'm just gonna adjust the focus there. So you can see these are closed ends so the card can't just hang off the end naturally. So we're just gonna do a quick little zip and uh, hopefully allow that card to fit. Here's the card. Now a very important thing to note is you'll see this blade when I turn it on you probably can't tell, but it's spinning in this direction, which means that the cutting blade is gonna kick a whole bunch of crap into the slot if I do it like this. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna come at this from the other side, like so, and then what's gonna happen, hopefully, is because the cut's happening here, it's gonna kick any crap this way and not fill my slot. Now, because I have to use the second slot with my uh, ribbon cable uh, riser, I'm gonna go ahead and make the modification to the top slot in case I totally screw it up. That way my card will still work. Also, another thing to note is you should always wear some sort of um, eye protection in case this, uh, this disc decides to split, because it does happen. And although, I mean, it's smaller than a grinder disc, it still could cause some damage. All right, wish me luck. Here goes nothing. Okay, so you can see I got a little sloppy and I nicked here, but there's no traces, so it should be okay. All right, so it looks like I gotta go in just a little bit deeper. I don't know if you can see there, there's still a little bit of a blockage, so let's uh, go for round two here. Okay, so you can see there, you can see the pins. It doesn't look like I've nicked them at this point, but uh, it looks like I'm gonna be getting really close to them to make uh, this cut. So it's a little bit nerve wracking. The other issue I'm noticing is um, I'm hitting the board quite a bit here in order to get the depth I need. Um, again, there's no traces, so I think I'm just gonna roll with it and hope for the best. I mean, the other option is I can go into the slot a bit more with the uh, cutting wheel, but then I'm taking a huge risk that I might screw up one of my pins. All 
Okay. So it looks like I've nicked the pin slightly there, but it's a little bit bent, but not not to a point where I think it's going to be a problem. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a different uh, a different bit on, and we're just going to try to grind out the rest of that from a different angle. Okay, so I've got a different bit on. I'm not sure how effective this will be, but we're going to attempt to use it just to carve out just the little bit of remaining plastic in my way. We've got to be close to getting here now. There's definitely a little bit of debris that got in there after all because obviously we're not using the grinding wheel anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use a, um, a very fine pick and I'm going to try to remove the debris and then we'll test fit the card again. Okay, so it appears that we've got, uh, we've cleared enough so we can go, I'll show you here. So you can, there you go, the card is fitting. So now the question is, will it still work? We're going to reassemble the whole shebang and uh, install it in the server and see what happens. All right, success. They all fit. And this looks a lot more stable than that uh, sloppy mess I had in there before. So you might also notice I've added a 10 gig ethernet card here, uh, SFP ethernet card. And that's because in the future I plan to upgrade my switch and then I figured since I have this card I just put it in now and skip myself shutting down the server in the future. Now I know this is a lot of uh, high bandwidth items on a riser card, so I don't really know what kind of performance I'm going to get out of this. I don't know if it's going to even be close to 10 gig, but we'll uh, try that. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when, when the time comes. Um, so there's lots of clearance here so that there's no potential shorts that could happen. Well, by lots, I mean there's a tiny bit of clearance, but everything is cleared. Um, so let's uh, stick this thing in and see if it works. All right, we're down at server level here again. So I've got the apparatus here that we're going to install. But first I'm going to remove this fan because I don't think it'll be necessary anymore. I only added it because without this, the uh, bracket that holds everything, I didn't believe that the airflow from the server fans would be adequate. So we'll pop that out. Oh, I better not uh, wrap this cable in between. Okay. Wow, look at that. Beautiful fit. It's almost like it was meant to be there. All right, let's fire this puppy up and see uh, what happens. It's a little bit loud when the cover's off and when it first fires up, as you can probably tell. All right, in conclusion, I've gone over everything and everything seems to be working exactly as it was before. The network card has been detected and installed. And looking at the temperatures, um, I was a bit, a bit concerned that I might see my card running a little bit warmer, but overall, even under load, um, the temperatures are all acceptable and only a degree or so higher than it was before, which is pretty good considering there was a lot of airflow before and now I've limited it quite a bit. All this shows is that it's a good server design and um, with all the correct pieces in place, the airflow is working exactly as it should. Just a note, if you plan to do this yourself, I will not be held liable if you screw up your board. You have been warned. Patience and precision are required to make sure that you do not botch the job and ruin your slot. In addition to that, you should make sure that if you do put yourself in a position where you may cut into a PCB, make sure that A, there's no traces that you could cut, otherwise you're gonna ruin whatever you're modifying. And B, you should make sure you're wearing a mask because the fine dust uh, can get into your lungs and that's super bad. Hopefully that will uh, calm everyone down that was outraged about my original install. And I uh, hope this might be helpful for someone else facing a, a similar dilemma. 
until next time, uh, like and subscribe, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video.